so uh, because I wanted to to present baby which is a, a proof of concept that has grown uh, into something a little bit useful to integrate a small business intelligence inside uh, Triton with its advantages and unknown disadvantages and the idea was to discuss something but we'll leave the discussion for another time probably I, I will show you how it works starting from uh, uh, the simplest user uh, in the company okay so basically you can have uh, a menu entry you double click on it and you basically have a tree view but we could say it's a dynamic table in which sorry it's in Catalan um, but basically uh, as you can see here's the the the, uh, the sum of all the values this one is quantities per year and well sorry for product and year okay so you just open this and open uh, training pharmacist training in year uh, 13 and you have several months and the amounts for each year okay so you just have this statistic created for you and uh, well in, in in one of the versions we had the user was able to update uh, this statistic whenever he wanted okay so it's just uh, another item that should be added here you do not design anything you just have a table that somebody created for you with several values and aggregated information whether it's a sum it's an average or any other one of those typical calculations okay um, the view also allows you to for example double tap on any of the items and uh, show a uh, a graph for you using any of the graph functions of Triton uh, vertical bars horizontal bars lines with uh, uh, different interpolation types showing uh, um, how is it named um, well labels okay and you can choose the dimension you want to use okay uh, in this case I double tap here I could use the first dimension which is product or I could uh, make a line graph out of year instead of uh, the product and all the year so the data of all products for all years would be added okay so I just have remember I just double tapped on it double clicked and it brings a uh, uh, a graph uh, a line graph I can of course come back here and double tap on training for year 213 and say okay I want to see it in a see this in a in a pie Oops. and I have the statistic okay mm -hmm. so the idea is that the user simply double taps in an action and that recalculates things and has an, a dynamic table basically basically the advantage of this is that uh, I can give the power to the user and but the, if the user doesn't have right access to uh, uh, to access to certain information because the calculation is done in, with their user right <coughs> he cannot see it so we if we want to use a business intelligence solutions we have uh, th there's a big step between having something in the ERP with okay with some limitations but moving to a complete business intelligence implies um, taking into account uh, access rights and things like that which is very complex and in fact we we more or less evaluated uh, a couple of solutions uh, recently I rechecked uh, Sparrow BI for example and doing statistics from a, a normal user not a programmer is not very very far from what we have here basically those are very good uh, business intelligence solutions but you require a programmer doing all those uh, charts or maps and information in maps so we can have a reasonable um, business intelligence solution okay 
but let's go one step further let's see that let's say that we have a user that is a little bit more advanced and he can uh, understand what is a dimension which is something uh, uh, well a measure let's say a measure which is something I aggregate and a dimension which is the concept by which I aggregate the information okay in this case the measure is the quantity and dimensions are product year and month okay mm -hmm. so if we have users that are able to understand that we can give them access to this menu entry which is where we define how the statistic will look like okay okay this is the form it's a, a little bit messed up because of the resolution Okay, that's okay. So the user simply has to give it a name, which is the name of the, that will be used in the menu entry. Give him, give the system the model, okay, where the information is taken from. And in this case, we use invoice lines because from invoice line we can get the product, but we also can get all the information from the invoice. So we can aggregate per product or per uh, date, for example, of the invoice. The parent menu entry, uh, we want to put this menu entry inside the baby uh, menu, but we could create many other ones. We can put here a filter so I can see only lines from uh, customer invoices, from supplier invoices, from credit notes or whatever. We will see later. But the user has this, has some filters that somebody already created from them, okay? So he doesn't have to care how the filter is done. And then we have uh, we, we start with dimensions. Uh, dimensions is a, an editable list, so it's pretty quick to, to do it. And he just put the product expression, the year expression, and the month expression, nothing more. I will create one later, so it's maybe easier to understand. I will jump at this one because it's not important right now. And he just put measures. And the system just pushing calculate it calculates uh, by grouping per product first then per year and uh, finally by month and summing okay doing the, the sum of quantity he could calculate the average by clicking here or calculate okay uh, count average and addition but we could add whichever whatever we want and he can even say that he wants to show it in, uh, I think, in a progress bar. Okay? So I, if I put a, a, here, a calculation, which is a percentage, I can show a progress bar in that, uh, in that uh, dynamic table. Okay? On the right, when the user has added those items here, when you save, the order is updated. So you can say, I want to sort first by product, then by month, by year, and finally by month, or sort by quantity. And which user groups will be able to see that, uh, that information, okay? And that's it. So you have a user, I, I will create that, another one. For example, product, uh, or whatever, by month, and product, okay? Just select invoice. Uh, I make it here. I don't have filter created right now, so I said month. Okay. Uh, thought that I had an expression here. <coughs> ah, okay. Yes, yeah, it's Catalan. Okay. I just select the month and product. That's it. I add here the quantity, and that's it. Okay, just create the menus here. Calculate. Okay, I could even well we'll talk about that later, but but I could give it a timeout. So if the calculation time is too long, it will just stop, and if I Update the menu entries. 
I will have the new entry, month and product, which is been calculated. Okay, and just double ta uh, double click here and get so this is a, a graph. Sorry. Okay. So it's pretty quick to to use it. And okay, let's say that in the company we have a an administrator or a programmer or something like that, or or. We are a services company and offer them the possibility of creating uh, new stuff. We can then create filters, which you can do it here or on the configuration section. Okay. In a filter, I can say uh, customer invoices. Okay. This, this is just a help to so I, I know which fields are available. And I can, can I could, in theory, I don't think it, it still works, but the idea is that you can go to the, in this case, in the invoice lines view and create a search, save it, and you can load it here. So it will load the domain that is stored in the filter and we'll put it here. Otherwise, I can just write down the filter here uh, well, if you know domains, you you just write it down, or optionally, uh, this comes from from Open ERP or where uh, you couldn't uh, search by functional fields or things like that, and you didn't have all the dot notation for searching, uh, or if in this case it's not implemented the search on a function field, you can put here a complete Python expression that would will be launched. Uh, line by line, okay. So you, I could say uh, object dot invoice dot party dot rec name uh, whatever. Okay, starts with none. Okay, for example, <coughs> you can put here any uh, an expression, and it'll, it will the first action it will do is cut the information, apply the filter and then aggregate the information, okay? So, as you see, a programmer can write it down and make it available to a, an end user so he can create uh, the, the statistic or, or the report. And in here, we have all the available fields, okay? Just like filters, fields depend on the model. So if we have, in this case, from invoice line, we have the, the party field available, the, the, the dimension, what will, will be a dimension. And we have here an expression. In this case, it's also a Python expression. I say object.invoice.party.rightName, and it will return the right name. So I could, for example, create a report in which we group uh, invoicing uh, quantities per uh, party. Okay? So I write the, the expression. I put here the field type. Okay, Boolean character, uh, floating point, um, uh, integer, a min to one, mini to ones also work, and numeric fields. Okay, uh, numeric uh, many to one. The idea is that it's useful in order to right click on the item. You have a um, you've grouped per customer, for example, and you right click on it, and you can see the details of invoices or any related information that typically is shown in this relate button, okay? So, well, I was quite fast. Uh, I don't know if you understood anything, but that's it, okay? This was uh, a part of our implementation for OpenERP. Uh, Sergi has been working uh, on another version, which I didn't manage to make it work right now. He just finished it yesterday, but the idea is a small change. You will see it here. Um, as I said, we, we've got the configuration section in which you put the general timeout for all reports, but you, otherwise you can put a different timeout here because the problem is that uh, depending on the statistic you create, it can take a lot of time because we're using Python code everywhere. Um, using Python code is, is here by design. Uh, we want to make uh, reports Mm, using function fields, so we decided that we preferred a slower system 
uh, but that had more or less everything and provide the timeout if it's necessary, okay? And the idea is to change a little bit that because uh, in current implementation, if you add new columns, given that the system creates a dynamic model, uh, that will also change uh, dynamically the views and it would break if you I have the model, the, I have, if I have a report open and I change the design and I uh, refresh the view, I will, it will crash, okay? So the new implementation, uh, what it will do is create a model for each execution, okay? And a single menu entry that goes directly to the last, latest version of it, okay? The idea is also having the estate using salary to uh, execute the, uh, the process in the background without interfering with, with the main uh, Triton D process and simply having the list here and opening would also be possible to so see the statistic from uh, one month ago or whatever, okay? And I would also like to have this screen in a new menu entry where we have all the executions of all reports, okay? Given that this uses, um, uh, you, you can supply here the gru user groups, we could have somebody updating reports and all users see the reports already calculated and just go to the last execution view, open up and etc. okay? So next step is uh, finishing this with salary, etc. And then we think there's, there's um, the possibility of improving this by using also uh, dashboards and creating not only dynamic, um, dynamic tables here, but choosing maybe here what kind of report you want. I want a, a dynamic table, I want a graph, I want a simple plain table. Plain table <laughs> is already possible, but the interface is not very good. Um, and that's the idea. And then provide that with uh, dashboards that the user can create. So that's it. Uh, we have, if you want, uh, I'm not a, you're not a starving, you, we've got 15 minutes to talk a little bit about this. Um, Nicolas created a library. You created a library that does the, the lower level stuff here. Uh, so it would be nice maybe to integrate something like that. I must say I don't know Bailey, so uh, <coughs> uh, it seems more way more dynamic than what we do. We write uh, SQL queries and we put them uh, into uh, into Triton models and Triton tables. But that's what we do, but we do it dynamically. <coughs> yes. So so, so we've also got, but we've also got uh, an engine which is which has some bugs we know. Uh, but that basically uh, fills in a table. Yeah. The, ol the only thing is that we dynamically create the model from that. So and so maybe using your definition to create what we do? But yeah, I, I, I think it's in theory... complicated to write those queries, so uh, I don't it's a little bit secure, yes, indeed, but uh, why not? Mm -hmm. It should be... <coughs> what, what can be printed out of that? Print it in uh, PDF, uh, for example. Yeah. Uh, 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 well, we we don't have any reports right now. Mm, it's something that it's been requested also. So at some point is another. There's a long to-do list in the module yeah. currently, and this one is one this of them. This is the kind of stuff that can grow. Uh, yeah. Well, would you and Would you like to do print with uh, the guy <laughs> before? <laughs> <laughs> so we can so we can contribute money, for example. Uh, yes, I don't know where where it will go, but we can contribute. Money. <laughs> 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 you, see, you see the yes, point yes. of the blueprint is that uh, it can it can convert make converge several. Uh, 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 we we didn't start with a blueprint. <laughs> uh, well, we started with OpenERP, but we it it was also uh, really a proof concept. We had the idea, but we said, uh, will it work really? And it slowly uh, grows, and we saw, oh, okay, this is useful. So that's why there are some mistakes here that should be fixed. Okay. Uh, I see that you oh. update the data uh, by pushing the data, but uh, can you do some uh, testing on the large data set? Well, there, 
there's a problem with large data sets. Uh, we've got uh, some customers that are using this in OpenRP. The, probably the performance is the, the same here, and the problems are more or less the same. Uh, the, our idea is, one, one of the ideas is, if you have a large data set, uh, well, there, there can be two problems. One is that you really need to process all of them. So in this case, the only idea I have is that we could try to improve performance. If you do not use a function field, we can try to uh, do something here. And, and so, sorry, just a comment. Um, the idea would be to add, uh, that the problem here is that we are materializing everything. And if you uh, do a calculation uh, statistic per product and year, maybe you don't want all your products. But there is no way for the user to filter just before launching easily which product. So filters should be more dynamic or something like that. So not everything is materialized. Uh, in new version, it's launched with salary, yeah. so, so it can be the idea is that it will be another process. Yeah, but, on the same on the same so but 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 it opens the door to doing it in another database, also. Yeah, I think it should be done. Yeah, yeah, uh, we we agree that for for making it performant and scalable, we should move outside, but it's only the execution. The main problem here is that we cannot easily balance because if we if I create for a customer a new database and you the, you do all all the uh, business intelligence here, uh, if he changes the the statistic here and I, I upgrade the database, I'm also uh, changing the report description. So I would do the report description in the same production database and only update in another database. Yes, there, there's also a, a, a Python library, which has been created to m make aggregation of all this stuff in memory, and it's also a lot of possibility, depending on the server. If you put a dedicated server for that, maybe it's it's not a stupid idea to put a lot of gigabytes of RAM and do the calculations on memory. I think there's there's room for improvement without making it very, very complex. Uh, I think if you can do on the the server, you can do on the server. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just wondering when you're, uh, so there are two ways to filter uh, your uh, search set. There is the, the Python expression and the domain. And I guess Usually, we should use it the domain, isn't it? And then, yes. and then the, the request will be um, well, you wouldn't have to write everything in a temporary base because um, mostly what you want to filter has been uh, is a, has been filtered out by the domain. I think uh, the the domain uh, will filter, uh, but sometimes you may need the second Python filter. Uh, the system applies the fil the domain filter. But in so if you provided a Python expression, it will also calculate it. Because if you use a function field which doesn't have a search function, yeah. you will need a Python expression. Or you may need something more complex than something that mm -hmm. domains can, can use. If, if you only do use a domain, it, would, it will be very performant. Because okay. it will use just the domain and search on it, and that's it. No more comments?
Okay, okay. let's go to lunch. Uh, no, it doesn't. Well, it works with version 3.0, but uh, I don't think there's much. I mean well, th there's a little, a little bit of SQL, and it's still SQL because of um, <coughs> historical reasons, let's say. It's not been migrated. But in fact, it uses uh, f um, copy from, which is a, a SQL statement uh, from PostgreSQL. Not available in SQL bit uh, because it's faster, but we could consider using the create with lists uh, possibility that now Triton has. Uh, it just, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it could be done. <laughs>